everyone, and welcome to another Nerd Alert news update with the new pretty graphics that we like. Say, do you like NSYNC? No. Well, too damn bad, cause it's gonna be May. It is May, it's a whole new month of fun, geeky stuff to fill up on your calendar, and I have a list of them for you, starting with comics. Now this month we were supposed to see The Adventures of Superman number one, featuring Orson Scott Card, who's well known for being a homophobe, slash, um, I mean, anti-gay marriage advocate. Well, his issue is going to be later this year because he lost his artist who quit. So instead from DC Comics, we have the movement number one and the green team number one. Now this is their take into getting political. This is obviously, if you see the poster, we are the 99%, we are the 1%, it's based on the Occupy movement. And they come with pretty cryptic descriptions. The movement number one says, we are faceless, we are limitless, we see all, and we do not forgive. We defend the powerless against the greedy and the corrupt. Who protects the homeless and poverty-stricken from those who would prey upon them in the dark of the night? Sound like someone we know, combined with Batman? Uh, and the green team number one, we have inventors, explorers, adventurers. Do you need money to finance an important project? Then you should set up a meeting with the green team. And then there's a list of stuff that, it looks like they're the villains, because one of their uh, items is piss off the Justice League. Well, the movement is written by Gail Simone, who did a really good job with Batgirl, and she says she wants to explore what power means. Power isn't necessarily money, but maybe information. She says, the movement is an idea I've had for some time. It's a book about power, who owns it, who uses it, who suffers from its abuse. As we increasingly move to an age where information is currency, you get these situations where a single viral video can cost a previously unassailable corporation billions or can upset the power balance of entire governments. That's really interesting to see them move in that direction. I want to see where these books go. In gaming on May 14th, we are going to see after a year of beta, Dust 514 actually go live on the PS3. Now this is the first person shooter, free to play MMO with micro transactional business model going live and it's deeply tied into the world of EVE Online which is on PC. I want to see how it all finally works in this, it's, well it's been in beta but like in a, in a more safe mode. But that's going to change real soon and shit's going to go down. On May 21st we are going to finally hear what's next for the next Xbox console, and thankfully we can stop calling it the Durango, which was a stupid code name, and I hate it. I don't know if we're gonna still call it the 720 still, which I don't think makes sense. What is it, spinning around 20s? Is that supposed to be revolutionary? I think no. Uh, there's a lot of rumors that we kind of have a strong base on. For instance, Kinect's gonna be baked in, you're gonna have to use it no matter what. If it's not operating, you're not playing your Xbox. Also, the controller will more, more than likely stay pretty much the same. Very incremental changes, lots of specs. What we think it will be running on is custom hardware, including an 8-core 64-bit CPU running at 1.6 gigahertz, an 800 megahertz DirectX graphics processor, various, quote, custom hardware blocks that are able to handle certain individual tasks, taking the strain off the main CPU, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive and built-in Wi-Fi. That's nice. It's also going to be using Blu-ray, way to catch up to the PS3 guys, and also have an HDMI in port. What we don't know is, are they actually gonna go through with the always-on DRM? Are we not gonna be able to play our used games? What is it gonna look like? Are we gonna keep the same kinds of achievements from Xbox 360? We don't know, but we will find out on May 21st when it's announced on Xbox Live, Xbox.com, and for some reason, Spike TV. In TV premieres, we have Marvel's Avengers Assemble premiering on May 26th on Disney XD. It's the Avengers animated, though keep in mind this is only the premiere episode. The whole series will be on later this year. Also on May 26th, the return of Arrested Development. All 15 episodes will be released at once. You can catch up on it now, I need to do that, and I recommend you do too if you love the series. If you can't wait that long, Zombieland is already on Amazon. If you liked Zombieland the movie, you will hate this. Movie time on May 3rd, we see the premiere of Iron Man 3, which um, it's been getting really good reviews for a comic book movie. People are comparing it to the Avengers, so if you like that, you'll probably like this. It'll probably be 
the last time we see Robert Downey Jr. starring in an Iron Man movie, probably the last of the series, I'm going to be real, I'm more of a Bruce Wayne person. And John and I were just having a fight of who is better and who would win. The goddamned Batman would win. Yeah. That's right. On May, <laughs> on May 17th, we are seeing, finally, Star Trek Into Darkness is premiering. I remember when I started doing Nerd Alert, that was one of the first things I talked about. I was standing outside, the only time I was ever outside doing a report, thinking how impossibly far it seemed. Well, now it's here, yay! So we're going to see, is Spock going to still be with Uhura? Is the bromance between him and Kirk over? Who the hell is Benedict Cumberbatch? All of this will be answered very soon. I'm excited and hopefully we'll have a review once it's out. Lastly, events. There are a ton of events going on around the country. If you're in LA, the Griffith Observatory is having a star party on May 18th. There's also an astronomy day in Boston, Massachusetts somewhat similar to that at the Clay Center Observatory. If you're in LA and you've got a little bit of nostalgia in your heart, well, at I Am 8-Bit is a gallery that is hosting It's the Shiznick, It's the Shiznick, whoops, uh, through early May. It's a return to 90s Nickelodeon if you're kind of from my era and you'd like to see your old favorites again. Something else in LA going on in early May, which is gonna be pretty bomb, is the Young Turks Billion views party. We are all going to be there, and we hope you watch. This is a shameless plug, yes, and it's a big milestone for us. Something that's not related to LA and not related to me in any way is Google I.O., which is May 15th through 17th in San Francisco. Now, this is the developer conference for, well, focus conference for Google, and they've already released a schedule. There's going to be a lot of things discussed. Android followers expected to see the platform's next-gen build the debut of Android 5.0 Key Lime Pie, but it looks like instead we might be seeing 4.3 Jelly Bean. Uh, there's lots of other things coming up, such as perhaps a new gaming center, cloud messaging, cloud gaming, developing Google Glass, and Google Wallet. So maybe we'll see some announcements for those. So this is not a complete list, not a full calendar. There's probably lots of cool things going on near you. If I miss something that you think is noteworthy and great, a launch, an event, whatever, please let me know in the comments, or you can always tweet me at twitter.com slash Kim Scorcher. I will see you next time. And you run around with everyone else, going on bike rides, making cornholes. Oh, Everyone's funny. laughing and riding and cornholing except Buster.